probability distributions. So y axis being a sum probability density. And the x axis being our values. And we had like a normal distribution centered on an average. So called the Gaussian distribution, the same thing. Uh, and we played we played around a bit with that, like like we were just saying, um, different ways to integrate it. Um, and this is a pretty de decent model for a lot of different phenomena, just because it's it, it it's relatively simple, um, and the premise makes sense when you when you when you go to apply it. There's this bell sort of shape means that the further away that you get from the average the less chance there is of some value occurring. So it kind of assumes that all your values are going to be clustered close to your average, which kind of makes sense, right? Like um, in more general things, if I'm cutting a bunch of two by fours two foot, foot long, I might not hit two foot every time, but I'm, going, but, but, but I'm always going to be pretty, pretty close to it. I'm not going to hit like six foot unless I'm really screwed up or something like that. I'm probably going to have a whole lot of values here that for, for length that are close to the average. And kind of similar for, say, if you are um, looking at uh, the, the properties within a relatively small area of rock, or you're looking at the properties of one, partic one particular rock, like you guys were in your uh, lab. Um, experimental and personal error notwithstanding, um, all the values for porosity should be relatively close to one another because they're all cut from the same hunk of rock. Um, so, a, so a Gaussian kind of distribution can fit a lot of different, di 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 different things relatively well. Um, we also talked a little bit about a uniform distri distribution, which essentially says, okay, um, Everything has an equal chance of occurring. Nothing is more, no result is more favored than another the way it is in a normal distri distribution. And this is what Excel's random number generator spits out. Um, in a relatively odd twist of fate, uh, it looks like there's some issue with Excel's random number generator that I did not find out about until yesterday, wherein it will not. Um, Converge as thought. If you run it for for increasingly large large sample sizes, the average won't 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 won't, won't naturally converge. Still working on why that is, but don't worry me about it for your homework. <laughs> if if you feel like that was something you didn't quite get right, so we got a uniform distribution. Got a Gaussian distribution. The last one that we're going to be talking about, at least for right now, is a triangular distri distribution, which isn't really that hard to intuit what the shape is going to look like. So same axes, probability density on the uh, y-axis, uh, values on the x-axis. That's as you might have guessed, that's kind of what a, that's 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 what the triangular distribution looks like. Except this point here, um, this is the mode. It's not the mean. It's the mode. Mm -hmm. um, the mode being what again? What number occurs most often? Yeah. What 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 observation occurs most most often? Now the thing with a triangular distribution is that it can incorporate skew from from the data from the data what does skew mean so in the gaussian distribution everything's clustered around an average it's always clustered around the average the average is always the most popular part the most popular <coughs> part of it and no matter what the max and mean are or her, her, the, the 
probabilities are going to fall are going to decrease as you go away from that average at exactly the same rate. So even if, uh, say, you get a lot of measurements on um, what you call on porosity as you go through a reservoir or a rock, even, even if there even if those measurements are highly biased to one side, this dis, this distribution will not model for that because it's so because it's the symmetrical distribution and the, and the probability density is going to remain the same on both sides of the average, no matter what you do, because that's just how it's defined. So some of that, the triangular distri distribution does, and why it's a nice kind of first pass mo statistical model is that it can incorporate skewed skew. How you make it is that this, bo this bottom end is the minimum from your, from, your, from your data set, top end is the max, this point up here is the mode. So now, I, this, this thing can, can be biased based on, what my, based on what my data is saying. My data is saying that I have a whole lot of samples with high, with high porosity and a couple of low, then, may, which call, then may, the, 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 maybe I'll get something, I'll, I'll get a distribution that looks more like this, where I have a whole lot of probability density up in this high range and not much down over, down, down, down over here, which makes sense if that's, if that's what my data says. So this, so this is a nice kind of first order approximation that you, that you, that you can use if, if, you have a, if you have a bunch of, of, of down of downhole data and you need to be able to model it somehow so that you can make simulations or otherwise make decisions based on, based on, based on that. All right. Um, so if we know that the min is down here, that's a zero probability dense, density at that point. So with the maximum, the only question is how do we get where the mode is? So the mode, call the probability density of the mode uh, C, and that, let's see if I can find a spot for it. I'll just do it here. C equals two over max minus the min. If that's legible, if that's if that's and if that's and if that's legible, I will be amazed. There you go. So it's so the probability density of the mode is max minus min. All right, cool. So now we know all of the points in this thing. So how would I find the problem? So uh, say that I was interested in finding the uh, pro the uh, probability of getting a value less than the mode. To do that, I'd have to find that area there, right? How do I find that area? On that basin site. Like? Yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all triangles. Well, 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 so, so, so it's really just two right triangles. So in order to find area, it's all about making just, just chunking this thing up so that I get triangles that I know the base and the height of. And based on side over two gets gets me the gets me the area of the triangle. What if I wanted to find that area? How 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 to get that? Well, have to know what point that is between the max and the mode. All right. So, say that I know that point it is x. The max minus x on one half of the time. Ooh, you can subtract it from the mode area from the other side. Now uh, there's, 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 there's a better way to do this. What do two points form? A line. A line. Can I give you, if I, do I know this point? Yeah. Do I know this point? Okay. So I'm, so that means I know the equation of this line. If I know the equation of that line, it means that if I 
have a point along, if I have the x point of a point along it, I can find the y coordinate of that point. Well, in this case, because I know what value I care about, I can find the probability density at that point. And then the probability density, that's that point right there, that's my height. I can find the base, base times height divided by it too. Y'all, y'all, y'all follow? Sweet. All right. The only, the only other trick, tricky thing, I think it can be tricky about this. So let's say that I want to know that area means I'm going to have, which called means I'm going to have to do what I was just saying, kind of find, which called kind of finding the equation of the line using that to get my areas. I'm going to have to do that a couple of times. And it's going to be different, it's going to be different lines because it's going to be this one or this or this or 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 this one. Y'all on board with, y'all on board with that? Sweet. If you want to get the area of the trapezoid, that's, that's cool too. Just make sure you're doing it right. All right, so. That's so that's so that's try so that's a triangle distribution. Um, what? Yeah. All right. So now, now so, so so we have this this this, this kind of useful dis, dis, distribution. We can do we can do things like um, create a a statistical model then that, that can account for skew in our data can do other really cool do other really cool things we can't do with these other two dis distributions that we've come up with now that we have it we want to use it we want to be able to model things with it be able to come out with estimates for things like EUR um, OIP whatever we, we want to come up with real numbers that we can use to make des, des, decisions with. So that's why we started talking about Monte Carlo sim, simulations or tying, or tying together stochastic processes and doing a whole slew of iterations and, and, until we get, until we have, 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 have converged to an, answer, to an answer, right? So if we want to use this distribution, we have to be able to sample it. We have to be able to to generate numbers that match the distribution. And that's it's called, so, 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 so. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. So one way to do this is to take, is because we don't have a triangular random number generator, just kind of float, just, just, just kind of floating around. One way to do this is to grab a uniform random number generator and map it onto a triangular dis, distribution. Did we, did, 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 did we talk, which call, we, 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 we talked a little bit about mapping uniform random number generators in the past onto kind of arbitrary probability distributions. Okay, we'll go back, back, back over that quick. So, <laughs> say that I can generate a random number anywhere from zero to one. So, here's my box O random numbers. This is a uniformly Distributed random number. I go from zero to one. Not, not inclusive. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. So, all right. So, uh, let me grab some data. So, uh, for example, if I had the uh, porosity data from the homework that we that that we did, here we go. Um, yeah. Oh, perfect. Um, Swap this guy up again. It'll just, it'll just be easy to look to look directly at it. So if we look at this porosity data again, this is my little charter here, 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 here. Um, 
if I let's call it how I've let's call it each each color is one bin of porosity data. If I look at each one, I can find the uh, the the fraction of uh, the samples that are in each bin. And you guys kind of and you guys kind of did this all 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 right. So like I can say. Um, um, doo -doo -doo. How, how, how many values are here and divide that by the total number of values and that says uh, percent less than one and that's it and that's the let's call it whole that's the fraction or if I do this or I could say that and say 28 percent of my data is in that first thing and has crossed the between uh, 0.4 and 1.4 per cent, right? So I could do that for all of them. So let's run that quick. 1.4 to 4.3, 4.4 to 7.2. Um, count is a wonderful command by, by, by the way. You don't think this is even better? Count if is pretty awesome. I will totally, I will totally get to that. But um, I'm being lazy. So. All right, so you can get to hit some percentages like that. So I know if I cut up my, so if, if I if want to kind of represent this data in by using a uniform by, by using a uniformly distributed random number it's going to be kind of because I know that if I pull a random number and it corresponds to a porosity 28 percent of the time it should be a porosity uh, less than 1.4 percent. 44% of the time it should be between 1.4 1, 1 and 4.3 percent and the other should to 20 percent of the time and it should be, be between 4.4 and 7.2 percent because that's what my data says okay does, does that premise make make sense okay so if I look at it kind of graph kind of graphically I've cut up all of the numbers that could be generated by this uniformly distributed random number generator in into these boxes. So 28% of, of them have to land here, and that corresponds to my porosity is less than 1.4%. 44% of them have to end up here, 28% of them have to end up here. These are all different ranges of, poros, of, poros, of porosity. So one way of saying, of doing this, of accomplishing that end, and saying, Okay, well, um, sorry. let's redraw this a little bit now. So I have some more room. He's saying, okay, well, if I have a uniformly distributed random number, that means that if that 28% of the time, I should get a value out of it that is less than 0.28. Is that, is that true? Think of it this way. What you call it? Hell, fifty percent of the time, I should get a, a value out of a uniformly distributed random number generator that is less than what number? And saying that the interval is from zero, from that goes goes from zero. Say that its interval goes from zero to one. Fifty percent of the time. Point five. Yeah, it's called. I should get a value out that is greater or less than 0.5. It should have, I should have an equal chance of getting the value greater than or less than that. Okay. What, what percent of the time should I get a number greater than 0.6? 40. Greater than 0.7? Right. So what, so if I'm, so if I'm looking for a number less than 0.28, what percent of the time should I get it? 0.28? Yeah. 28 percent of the time I should get a number less than 0.28 because it's 
It's it's it's because it's twenty eight percent of the do, the do, the domain. So what I can do here, if I if twenty eight percent of the time I want a porosity that's less than one point four percent, one point four porosities in that zone now correspond to numbers from zero to zero point two eight. Or, now we'll, we'll get that in a second. Now, let's call it, and uh, let's let, let's pick well, let's pick the average of these bins because it's a little bit because it's a little bit easier to work with. That can be more representative. So uh, the average for this bin is uh, porosity equals 1.02 percent, 1.03 percent. Okay. So now I want 44 percent of this area to correspond to porosity of 2.73 percent. So if from 0 0.2 to 0 0.28 is already claimed, what should my next region be? Seventy-two makes sense to me. All right, so between zero point two eight and zero point seven two, that's forty or forty-four percent of the time. That's that's going to correspond to a porosity equal to two point seven three percent, or the middle, or the average of the second bit. And using with twenty-eight percent of my area left, which corresponds to my third bit or porosity for the 5.41%. Okay, so we just mapped uniformly distributed random number onto empirical data. Not in any particular kind of distribution, just in whatever the raw numbers of, um, of, our, of our empirically determined data uh, were. Um, and this can be good and bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's called certainly true to whatever we observe, um, but what we observe might, which call ho ho ho, might might not exactly match what <coughs> is there because of which call air, which call because of errors in sampling and 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 the uh, like, be it actual measurement errors or just not having enough data points or whatever or or, or what or whatever. And that's and that's that's kind of the handy thing with fitting a probability distribution and sampling from that. It is. Um, so, instead of mapping a, a uniformly distributed random number on onto these kind of um, how, how, how do I say it? Discrete pro, 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 probabilities, meaning ex exact numbers. We're going to map it onto a continuous dis distribution, like the triangular distribution that we we're just looking at. Continuous meaning that um, I can look at any given value between min and max, and if you think of the values in this case being porosity, I can look at any porosity, not just one that I've selected as a bit. So let's look at so let's look at doing that. So if I wanted to map, so I want to map a uniformly distributed random number onto a continuous probability distribution. So this is going to be a little bit weirder than what we just did, because there, it, it kind of makes sense. I have buckets, they're so wide, I can kind of make the buckets go where I 
want them to be he, he, he using that kind of graphical hermeneutic. Here we don't really have buckets anymore because it's continuous. It's not it's not big. So what we can do instead is look at what's called a, cum a cumulative probability distrib distribution. So say I have my distribution values prob density, just use a row for density because rows are fun. So there's so, so there's my triangular dis, distro distribution. A cumulative probability distribution would essentially be me moving from left to right and saying, okay, there's there's an area there's an area there. Tell me tell me he 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 the probability of getting anything to the left of where I of where I am. And if I put that onto a graph. So this, so cumulative probability, as I'm going to move from right to left across my probability distribution, and plot uh, plot the air plot the area to the left of whatever value that I'm at. Okay, so I'm going so which call a whole, I'm, I'm going to take increasing sections going across, and as you might imagine, that should take some sort of a quadratic shape on this on this cumulative distribution graph. And then as it slopes down, it's going to go the other go in the other direction go in the other direction until it hits the maximum. And when it gets to the maximum, what should this what what should its value what should its value be right there? One. One. Because the it's called the the it's called the, whole, 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 the probability of me getting any value to the left of this maximum is one is one hundred percent because it covers all of the data on the chart. So this so what I can do now is map the cumulative probability distribution of a uniformly distributed random, random number on on to this and this. Then course, and then this core, and then, and then this would correspond to values on the actual, on the actual triangular dis, 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 distribution. So by putting those together, I can actually make a uniformly distributed random number. If I do some math, uh, spit out triangularly dis, dis, distributed values according to whatever distribution I want because I form because I define what this triangular dis distribution looks looks like based on a completely arbitrary data set. I can do it with any data set that I want. So this is kind of cool now. Well I think it's kind of I think it's kind of cool. So anyhow um, doo -doo -doo -doo. all right All right, so I need to get, come on, catch up, catch, catch up with me, computer. Thank you. Just making sure that I'm saying the right thing. Okay, cool. All right, so, so how, so how, so how, so how to do this is something called in in in, in inverse trans in, inverse transform sam sampling, which looks something like this. So my inverse transform function is the f to the negative first thing. U is my uniformly distributed ran, 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 random number. So if I go into Excel and say equals rand, that's that's you, not me. So 
the so, be, so because the triangular dish distribution <coughs> kind of has two sections to it, two different triangles to it, this this ends up being a piecewise function. So the one on top is C is root C U. Uh, remember that the prob which called the probability density of the mode is C. So two so two over max uh, minus min or whatever we said. Uh, yeah, max 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 minus min. So the upper one's root C U, and that applies for zero less than U less than C. The other one is one minus root uh, one minus C one minus U. That's for C less than equal to U is less than one. And this is for uniform distributed random number um, on the domain from zero less than u less than one. Okay, that's it. That's a u. I promise. Okay. So, what's the problem with this? That you. So what do you think might be a problem with this? What range might it output in? So, yeah. So yeah. the f inverse u, that's the graph of what? The top graph? It's not, it's not of those. It's, it's, it's just these, these two graphs just kind of set up this is um, set up of, of how we get to here. Um, so the cumulative probability dis, dis, distri, distribution that's kind of the her, that's kind of the hermeneutic that we're using to get to this inverse transform sampling function. But this inverse transform sampling function is actually going to produce values that look like this. So based on some triangular distribution that I've all that I've made, I can use this 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 inverse trans, transform sampling function to produce more more data that follows that same dis dis distribution. So I can do so. Some can do Monte Carlo simulations based on triangularly distributed data. Now the trick is uh, Excel's random number generator. What does it produce values between? Zero and one. So this, we shouldn't expect to produce anything outside of zero and one, which doesn't necessarily help us then, right? Because like porosity, he, 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 he's usually between like zero and 0.3, permeability, it can be like in, in thousands of that. Um, from looking at absorbed gas capacity, it's like from two to whatever. Zero to one is not necessarily the domain that we want. So what we have to do with our ant with the numbers that we get out of this is that we need to transform them into whatever domain the original data is. And this and this is actually pretty straightforward. So um, so in order to get a correctly mapped value have to do one more step excuse me uh, do, 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 do. all right uh, oh sorry oops um, so the output from that generator is going to be yeah that doesn't make sense okay so if i wanted to compare that to a physical value so some so some that I could actually expect to exist what i could do is kind of figure out where that physical value is in its is in the domain of the sample this is minimum. I just can't spell today. 
and divide that by its domain. So in other words, I could get something that looks like this by just going on to my triangular dis, dis, distribution and saying I'm going to pick a value here. If I subtract out, um, if I which call it, if I if I can normalize this somehow by the width of my <coughs> do, by the width of my domain, that which call it, that would also give me a number on the uh, domain of zero to one. So I can solve this going backwards now. Uh, hold, hold. Based on whatever number I get out of this for f for f for f inverse of u, I can solve this uh, this uh, equation. Say that well, that f inverse u corresponds to some physical value. Like that. Cool. So it's so it's so it's kind of a so it's so it's kind of a two so it's, so it's kind of a two-step process. You have to well three-step process, I guess. Yeah, you, you have to you have to who, who get you have to get your data and create your triangular distribution. You have to sample it, and then you have to take those sampled whole, whole values that are on the domain from zero to one. And transform them back into whatever actual physical domain that that that, that, that matters for your for your data set. Any and questions? Cool. Well, this so this is the basis of uh, some Monte Carlo stuff. This is kind of the basis of what your final project will look like, which isn't going to be too too bad, I promise. And uh, that's all we got for today. Thanks for stopping by.